So I was in the academy, figure out I was a lecturer at the university for five years, and the last 20 years I was in the technology industry, mostly I finished inside. Um, I get passionate about the material data cloud since I remember, since now again. Uh, currently, in my role, I'm uh, leading uh, data AI DevOps cloud engineering teams. Uh, the current project is sort of trying to building a new challenge back in Hong Kong, completely digital. So, and all this currently the build-up process of the machine experience. Uh, so, what this talk about? So, we quickly will cover. Uh, how to install and configure tools specifically for deployment. By the way, are you familiar with Terraform? Do you know what it does and how it works? How many of you know it's Terraform? It's, oh, it's, 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 it's impressive. So, uh, we'll create a Terraform install and configure uh, on the GCP uh, Kubernetes cluster. We will do the, we'll save the, our TF state in the backend, in the, what we call it, the storage. Uh, we'll create a project for development and production. We will create a great structure as well. Uh, initially, I thought to do the hands on, the demo, but later I realized that just typing it, there's so much data. So I just, yesterday, I created a ticket, screencast, and basically run with it. So, the amount of data here may be many hours, so I can see that we're taking 90 minutes. That's the information. Cool. Okay, so uh, in order to deploy your form, you Basically, query stacks, you just need to pull on this, download it, yeah, and copy it in your user. I think my laptop is very sensitive. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, so for Linux, you just follow the instruction. Um, again, you need to get kubectl, the same thing. Uh, I use the latest version, Terraform was just released, I think, a few days ago, uh, uh, version 111.10. I think this one will, have, will be released a new version with completely new language supported, 1.12. Uh, KubeCTL, again, it's the latest version, 1.12, current release. So um, I didn't include any installation of the gcloud CLI. Uh, currently, how do you deploy, uh, the presentation will be how do you deploy, you will need the cloud CLI to create the Terraform service account, and then you can use Terraform to deploy everything else. So again, I didn't include how do you deploy it, it's very specific to the distribution and macOS Windows. So what do you need, so let's start in the Google start, in order to deploy with Terraform, we need to have a Terraform as a service account. A service account will be a technical account with basically Deploying all the infrastructure in the cloud. Uh, Terraform as uh, cloud deployment uh, manager is very flexible, it supports most of the clouds, and it's a lot outside the cloud as well, including it be supports Kubernetes. Uh, we'll start basically to uh, installing, creating uh, a project. So, as you know, that every single resource in the Google Cloud, you need to have a project. In the project you create a service account, your Kubernetes, whatever you decide. Yeah. In this case, we're just exporting environment variables, assuming you have the Linux shell or MicroS. Uh, so if you follow just creating the term, creating the copy, copy basically, basically we, we in this case we're creating the projects, uh, and we're linking the project to building building account. So second step is uh, once we have a project created, uh, we need to create a, a service account. We will call it Terraform, and uh, and we will need as well the keys to authenticate because we, the search certificates we will use as a user from the local to authenticate, or we can export it if you have a pipeline in Bitbucket. You can pay sixty four and export it and use the video automated way. Uh, we need additional a few roles to assign to just creating a service account is not enough. You need to be very specific with kind of the roles and permission you allow to the service account organist. Uh, in this case, uh, we'll give the service account the role as a viewer. Yeah, and storage admin. Why storage admin? Because uh, we will store under these projects the TSA files. So we don't want to store TSA file, therefore, it's where you store 
all the state, states of, the, of the cost deployments. It's much more efficient than uh, stateless in this case, at least. You always can map your API calls and map your state of the cloud to what it actually exists. So, again, we need to enable quite a bit of APIs. You just need to follow, if you just copy paste, it should work. And we'll see how it is. So, uh, additional permission we need to grant to Terraform service account. An example would be project creator, because therefore the service account should be allowed to create the projects. And once the project is created, you need to assign the building account to it, where we can speed up different resources. And the last part, we'll use GS Utils to create a new bracket and version it. It's a good practice and where we can use. So this is a quick demo starting from the beginning. So this is how all the steps that we did. This is how they look like. And definitely I, I hashed all the data. So again, we're creating uh, all the steps that we see before. Now we try to replicate. So it will take a few, actually this is a speed up twice. If you try to do it manually, it probably will be a little slower, plus typing. So, so we're creating, in this case, we deploying APIs. Now we're creating the, the project creator that assigned the role, then a new role where you can create a bidding account, we create a new bucket, create a versioning, and exporting the API. So let's see. Uh, so the first thing what we try to do in Terraform is we need to create a project. So in this case, I create a separate uh, separate source sources for the project, and we'll take a look very shortly. So we have a backend. Backend will be pointing out to Terraform where it's saved the Terraform state files in the in, in, in a Terraform service account project. Mine will have all the data for the project creation, outputs that will take it, outputs and ingest in different Terraform format, Terraform DM bars where you give the secrets, and variables where, where you usually will keep all the variables that you will refer. So let's, let's go a little bit more deeper. So the first thing is good practice is to put in git ignore. If you will use a source control system, uh, usually you don't need the TF state, Geo bars, it's better to keep it away. So, Terraform, Geo bars, this is, looks similar to that. So, you have your building account, organization ID, that will be referred. Uh, backend, this is where you store your TSA file because we already created Terraform admin. Bucket, so that's what we say. And um, the Terraform project will be based in the folder in the bucket. Will store all the TDS state files for project creations. Uh, looking at the variables, so we defined a few variables here. So uh, Terraform allow us for conversion, I think 11.9. They allow us to create, to have a single source and create workspaces. So what does it mean? You can jump between, you have a single trunk where you can use for post development, staging, production, the same source code instead of and all the environment variables can be defined as a, in a workspace. That's what we define the production and development. And we'll see how this will work. Um, again, the billing accounts and organization ID, it, was, it is referred to, to the backend. So this language, the Terraform using it, is um, it's essential the files will be here. It's a special term, it's a special HashiCorp language is very similar to, to JSON. So the people who are working in development and development of JSON should be very straightforward. Again, MyTF, this is where we're creating the projects. Now, uh, as Terraform allow multiple cloud creation, uh, Google is one of them. So and it's a modular system. You need to download or Terraform downloading the modules. So in this case, um, it's a good practice to specify the version of you use because sometimes it breaks. Uh, another provider I use a random in this case. Uh, when I use the random, every time you create a new project, you need to assign a unique ID for the project. An idea is you don't want to hard code it. You allow it to auto-generate and attach as attachment to your project name. 
it's a new ID book. So and here, what, how we use it. So in this case, for example, the project ID will take a Terraform name, or here will be a hex. It will be the four character after that. Again, for this project, in this case, we assign it, again, multiple APIs. So it's quite a bit, so, but you may use different APIs for different projects, depending on what you want to do. If you need only a TKE or you need compute and OS login. So once uh, the last, last piece of the, of the is of outputs, so what we need, uh, the Terraform needs to export the project ID once it's created, because it's unique. So this is where we export it, and we'll see how it looks like. So once we edit all these files, so the last piece is basically to trigger development. So currently this is how you trigger it manually. You definitely can implement it in any CICD pipeline. So first of all, Terraform initiate will initiate download all, all dependency of the module. In this case, will be for example the random Google uh, JCP uh, modules. Uh, we will create a workspace, workspace where we can segregate between the production and development. Once we have the workspace and we have workspace, we can use the Terraform plan. It will show Terraform will try to show us what we will be creating based on the simulate creation, and Terraform will apply based on the live existing. So we can take a quick look. Again, it's double the speed. So we initiate it. We create a new workspace as that, new production. Now we switch back to the development workspace. We need to have a quick list to see where the, currently we need a plan. This will simulate what will happen. What we do try to apply, this is exactly what we try to create. So in this case, we are creating just uh, two, uh, two projects, one for development, especially one for development, one production, and assigning the APIs. So then we just creating the projects, we don't create anything else in this case. So once it's done, uh, next step, uh, now we have an interesting part, that's where we are creating the uh, GKE cluster. So it's the same logic, uh, it's more modular. In this case, uh, we are using the modular structure instead of having a single source code in one big file. So we, we structure it and we'll see how it looks like. Again, the same thing, we're using the Terraform admin uh, bucket, but now we have a different prefix. It will be like a subfolder where we keep a DSA file for GPE. Uh, in the, in the my source code that I mentioned, so maybe we can see better than ID. It looks. So this is our. Okay, so currently. So what we're doing, we, we already created the, the new projects, but we need to pass the information of the project ID that was created from the previous step to ingest them in the current source. That's why we're using the Terraform remote state, we're importing the project IDs and we're importing in this new source that it can be used. The cluster will be created in previously created project. Again, we're using the Google as a provider. Now we, we are looking, so what we do here, we have a few areas. But we focus one, we're creating the VPC networking stack, we're adding the subnets, we're creating the firewall, and that's why it's located. So if you go to the back end, let's take a look at the VPC creation. So this is a file where actually VPC is created. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, depending on which workspace you are, it will be development or production, it will, the name will be assigned and the VPC will be created. So this will be the name of the VPC. Uh, again, with the subnets, it's the same story. You create multiple subnets, but the difference will be depending on the work workspace you are, CIDR, the range of your subnet it will be different and is defined in the variables. And you will see where we're defining it. If we are in the workspace production, this will be the CIDR applied. If we are in the workspace of development, this will be CICIDR for the development side. So depending on which workspace you are, it will be very specific, we will create different CIDRs. 
So, uh, coming back to the mind folder, so when we have a subnet, we need to set up the firewall. Uh, additionally, I put Cloud SQL, where Postgres SQL can be created, but our, what we are focusing on the most is the GPD, which is in the G GKE source. And we have again three forms. So this is how we're creating the actually the visible cluster. So depending on the regions, I choose Singapore in this case. So additional configuration. So you can uh, have a dashboard, for example, code auto scaling. You can disable the enable. So you all this configuration as a code, so you don't need to do it manually. So again, so we went through, so the same principle applied, you would need to initialize this first because this is a separate repository. Uh, you create a new workspace, you plan it and apply it. And let's see how it looks in reality. So we initialize, you see you downloaded all the modules and dependency. We plan, this is what Terraform will do for us and now we are fine. So this usually takes for database, uh, for Postgres SQL, is take around five minutes creation. If you're patient enough for uh, Kubernetes, around two to three minutes. So, because we are double the speed, it should be fast. And the sound, at the end, you will see we have a, this is our new, new project that was created from the previous example. This is endpoints. CICR, CIDR that we define for for development project and we've seen it. A few additional possibilities you work with the Terraform again, you can do the state list, you can do the Terraform to show different modules, you can go deep enough. Uh, example, if you once done testing, it's the uh, best idea to, to destroy and remove. So you can remove only specific components from the cluster, or you can remove everything that was previously on the Terraform. Uh, coming back to the Terraform, one of the good practices as well is to have a separate, uh, each each module, in this case, can be completely separate in repository, so you don't need to have it in the same folder. This is allow different teams, for example, the database team to be only completely one module and not interfere with another team. So this could be very accessible from this perspective. Again, so very quick how we will check the state of the file. So this is everything what we built previously. Now we have details for the specific modules, and we basically destroying everything that was created. Once it's done, we can recreate it again. So another good practice is for if you develop an environment you can automate. For example, if you want to cut down the cost, you can create a script that the before the weekend, in the Friday night, basically everything is destroyed. Monday morning, everything is revealed, so you don't need to pay for the weekend, for example. It's a multiple use cases that it can be used. So in this case, everything destroyed, <laughs> we are pretty much done. As information, again, so for presentation is available in Docker. So if you're running this presentation in Docker, you just pull this presentation and run it. Just as well for DJ. Source. Sources you can quickly found on the GitHub with all the documentation, so you can run yourself. If you have any questions, any questions? <clears throat> Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Just a comment. Okay. You need you need a bash script to install a. Uh, a Terraform environment is that long. Uh, your, your Google credentials, your Google Cloud, uh, SDK. Again, if you are using, again, all, everything what I use, all the Terraform, for example, Google Cloud, Kubernetes, I actually didn't install them. I use them as containers. I run them in Docker containers. I just create an alias, which is basically map. Yeah, so in my case, if the same thing if you run any of like the pipelines, right? It's running as a containers. So what you need only the credentials for them, you need to, to convert in base64 and export them and everything is running as, as credentials. So you don't need to install 
for any perspective. So it's really straightforward. Where do you keep your secrets? Ah. <laughs> so, again, so in this case, yeah, because you are the secrets are kept in standard culture, for example, uh, and I will show you approximately where the secrets are kept. So this is a new distribution. So if you they are kept in configuration. Inside the container or outside the container? And outside. Yeah. You just mount it as environment variables. Example would be the let's see it. Alias, for example, I can use the Terraform here and I export you the alias where it's my secrets is located basically. So you just Here's source you just source your secrets file and uh, okay. so I have all potentially the file and I export the environment variables that the Terraform can read from inside the container. Thanks. If no more questions, I think there are most people post yeah, sure. Sorry, can I understand uh, before you run Terraform, then why do you create uh, your your project environment for? Because I'm still not very sure what what is created will be in it. Uh, you you can do everything. So I decided to separate them. Yeah. So the reason I decided to separate to have better control. So for example, the project creation is done once, and you don't operate. So your cluster may change every time, or you create or destroy everything else. But project is quite stays. So in order to segregate the the life cycle, right? So you, you can do as well the project creation in the same same time. So it's, it's not big difference. It's depending, so I decided to go separately because it once in a lifetime and it's not so much anymore. And everything else you do. Uh, plus, additionally, in the from permission perspective, again, because you, you know, the people who allow, for example, to manage the, the project creation and people who actually deploy inside the project will be different people, different teams. And again, if you have a different source repository, they just need to import the state files and deploy. So again, it's, it's many reasons why you want to keep them separately. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much. If no more questions. Yeah. Uh,